it's Haley. Great to see you here again at my sticky studio. Well, this week I've really got a challenge. And I mean an actual challenge. You see, my friend Jake challenged me to a pancake decorating contest. Pancakes! And I'm only allowed to use things that people actually eat on pancakes. <laughs> Hard, oh, I mean yum, chocolate syrup. Yum, regular syrup. A classic. Strawberry spread. Modern. And, of course, whipped cream. Another classic. For all your holiday needs and pancake decorating contests, I'm covered. Now, the first challenge is to make a giraffe. Yeah, this looks good. Oh, it needs ears. Duh, Haley. Oh, we gotta get spots. Uh, not as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> Hmm, wow. Ooh, this sure is sticky. I'm still supposed to create three more images to compete with Jake. You know what I need? Some determination. Determination is deciding it's worth it to finish what you started. Today's story is about two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and John. They were determined to spread the truth about Jesus and follow the Holy Spirit's leading no matter how hard things got. Wow. Well, I think I'm feeling more determined just thinking about it. I can do this! Oh no. Oh no! I'm, I'm just gonna clean this up first. Be right back. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters 3 and 4. John found himself nearly skipping as he and Peter made their way up toward the temple. More than 3,000. More than 3,000 people are following Jesus I've now. I've never seen anything like it. The way people are sharing their homes, their food. Every day a few more people believe. This tell the whole world gig is going more smoothly than I expected. As Peter and John approached the temple gate, they saw a man lying on a mat. Please help me. We'll call the man Ezra. For his entire life, he'd been unable to walk a single step. Could I have a few coins for food? Peter and John looked directly at the man. Peter could feel the power of God's spirit rising inside him. Look at us. Ezra fixed his gaze at the disciples and held out his hand. I don't have silver or gold, but I'll give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Peter reached out and took Ezra's hand. Instantly, his feet became strong. He leapt to his feet. Wait. What? How? He took a step, a skip, a hop, and a jump. Praise Jesus! Ezra began to dance and spin around. This guy couldn't even walk 10 minutes ago. And as you might guess, a big crowd gathered. Peter called out loudly. Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? It's not as if we've made this man walk by our own power or godliness. God has done this. God has brought glory to Jesus who serves him. This man, whom you see and know, was made strong because of faith in Jesus' name. Faith in Jesus has healed him completely. Wowzers! So turn away from your sins and turn to God. Then your sins will be wiped away. But while the crowd was wowed, the religious leaders were fuming. They sent the captain of the temple guard to arrest Peter and John and sent them to prison. Preach it to the rats, boys. What's that you said about things going smoothly? God's Holy Spirit is still with us, even here. The next day, a group of religious leaders, including the high priest Annas and his family gathered together. They ordered the guards to bring Peter and John before them. 
By what power did you do this? And through whose name? Peter didn't hesitate. Rulers and elders, do you want to know why we were kind to a man who couldn't walk? Are you asking how he was healed? Peter gestured to where Ezra was standing, not far off, watching. Ezra did a little two-step. The religious leaders glared. You nailed Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the cross, but God raised him from the dead. It is through Jesus' name that this man stands healed. You can't be saved by believing in anyone else. If mics had been invented, Peter would have dropped one right there. The leaders glowered and Anna's cleared his throat. Leave now and never come back until we call for you. Once Peter and John had been taken out, the leaders grumbled to each other. The nerve. These are common men with no training. So bold. I hate to say it, but... Say what? Well, the way they talk, you can tell they've been with Jesus. <laughs> but what can we do with them? Everyone in Jerusalem knows they performed a miracle. We can't say it didn't happen. This stops here. It stops now. We give them a warning. Never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Ah, yes, that's it. Peter and John were brought to stand before the religious leaders again. You must never speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Yes, or, or, or else. Peter and John exchanged a glance. They knew these leaders had the power to lock them up, or even kill them. Which is right from God's point of view? Should we listen to you? Or should we listen to God? You be the judges. There's nothing else we can do. We have to speak about the things we've seen and heard. Just don't do it! The leaders couldn't find any reason to keep Peter and John in prison. So they finally let them go. Yes! Exploding fist bumps, my bros! Peter and John returned to their friends and shared everything God had done. Through the power of God's spirit, the number of believers had now grown to more than 5,000. Whoa, how amazing of a story was that? Peter and John were so brave. They were so bold and confident because the Holy Spirit gave them confidence. From Abraham to Joseph to David, God made amazing promises to save and bless his people. And Jesus was the ultimate fulfillment of God's many promises. After Jesus died, rose again, and went back to heaven, his disciples knew it was their job to share the good news about Jesus. And once they had the Holy Spirit, they were able to do so. Just think how Peter and John healed that man with the power of God, and then lots of people learned about Jesus. Or how they didn't back down when religious leaders questioned them. They were determined to finish what they started. And because they relied on God, they did it with confidence. And you know who else has been throwing down some confidence? <laughs> it's your girl, Haley. Woo, take a look. Just look at these masterpieces. Okay, so I guess they're not the greatest pancake paintings you've ever seen, but I wanted to complete Jake's challenge, so I, I did my best. Sometimes it's easy to want to quit something when suddenly it gets difficult, like maybe learning how to ice skate, or reading a new book was easy at first and then it got harder, but it's always worth it to finish what you started. That's the one thing to remember today. Keep going even when it gets tough. Well, that's all I've got for you today, kiddos. Now, the only question is, what am I gonna do with all these extra pancake toppings? Mm -hmm. 